The invasion of Sunday at the AMO, popularly known as Igbo Osha, is still a mystery. What happened on that day? A very terrible event. Human rights abuse. Invasion of someone's home without prior notice or invitation. Properties vandalized. Human beings that are innocent, that have nothing to do with terrorism, killed. Sunday Igbo displaced. Well, Ademola, one of the 12 associates of Sunday Ademo, has narrated our practice of the Department of State Services invaded Igbo's home and killed two people. Like I said, Igbo's house was raided by the DSS on 1st of July 2021, killing two of his associates and arresting many others illegally. Ademola, who told Sunday Punch, he is the director of Sunday Adeyemo's foundation, accused the DSS of killing people in cold blood during the raid. He was one of those arrested by the DSS and later released. Recalling the raid on Igbo's residence in the Soka area of Ibada, or your state, Ademola said, we woke up to find ourselves in that mess. It was a misuse of power by the present government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I have been minding my speech about the events of that day because a lot of us are still suffering from psychological trauma because what happened that day alone can take one's life. My house was not far from Chief Sunday Igbo's house. And being a father to me, I have access to him and he has to me also. He did call to see me anytime to run errands for him. I was in my personal house around 12 a.m., but I had a message to pass across to him, which I could not deliver by phone. I moved from my house to his residence at exactly 12 a.m. and met with him. We discussed till around 1 a.m., and we're outside with some of our people till around 1.30 a.m. In his house, I have a chalet he allocated to me as one of his associates. At exactly 1.30 a.m., he moved into his building. Others retreated into their own apartments, their own chalet, their own rooms. And I also moved into my own. But at exactly 1.35 a.m., five minutes after we finished discussing outside, I started hearing gunshots, and I wondered what was happening. My chalet is directly facing the main gate, and I opened the window to peep to see what was happening outside. To my greatest shock, I couldn't see anybody, but I heard sporadic gunshots. Whenever I heard fire they will shoot at the building so it's more or less like a coordinated attack as a muslim i started reciting different verses of the quran believing it might be the end of my life while still peeping through the window i could see two dss personnel inside the house they already breached the per perimeter they already got themselves inside of the house. They came through the fence because they could not force their way in through the main gate from outside. So some of them jumped the fence and came in to open the gate for the others. When they opened the gate, I saw that they were dressed in black and were putting on helmets. They were dressed like they were on a battleground facing Boko Haram. For those who do not know what Boko Haram is, of course, many of you know Boko Haram. It is the terrorists that have taken over the north of Nigeria. And also, they've embedded themselves, entrenched themselves in government. He went on to say, I heard them calling themselves, come in, two, two. I immediately woke the boy that was with me and told him that we needed to start preparing for our burial because there was no way. To escape there were more than a hundred personnel 
inside the building, comprising the DSS and soldiers. So it's a coordinated attack, like I said. DSS dressed with bulletproofs. A hundred and more of them. They shot sporadically everywhere. When they got to any chalet or any of the rooms, they fired directly into the chalet. I started praying and I'm thankful that God saved my life. The shooting continued for three hours. When they got to my chalet, I opened the door for them. They marched on my head on the floor. I had collected around 300,000 naira from Chief Sande Igbo, which I wanted to use to buy something the following morning. One of the soldiers picked up the money. They demanded my gun and told them, do I look like someone who can shoot? Do I look like someone who can operate a gun? That's the question that I asked them when they asked for my gun. They marched and kicked me on my head. And they handcuffed me, then took me to the gate to lie down there with others. At the gate, to my greatest shock, I saw one of my very good brothers, Saeed Ola Dams, called Adogon, the chief executive officer of Ola Dams Motors in Oshogo, in a pool of his blood. Likewise, Afa, we were still together around 12.30 a.m., but the two of them were already gone down. After we had been handcuffed and laid on the floor, their security operatives started destroying the vehicles in the compound, threatening to burn down the house and saying all sorts of things. They also made a roll call of the people in the house. That was what happened. But to the glory of God, here we are today. The two persons killed were identified as Saeed, Adisa, public called Adogon, and Igbo's maternal uncle, known as Alpha. Denying the claim made by the DSS that the two people killed were harmed and had engaged operatives in a gun duel for one hour, Adamala said there was no retaliation by anyone in Igbo's house. Nothing of such happened. Nobody retaliated. Nobody exchanged gunshots with them. You know the Nigerian military, if anybody had retaliated by exchanging gunshots, you know what would have happened. Those they were killed, those that were killed they didn't exchange gunshots with them. Afa was an innocent man. He was killed in the waiting room of Chief Sunday Bo while he was praying. He was a cleric and he could not see. He was blind. On getting to the waiting room, they, the security operatives, fired straight and gunned him down. Also, Adogon did not in any way exchange gunshots with them. He was shot in the bathroom where he was hiding. Ademola also noted that the DSS initially arrested 22 people, 12 males and 10 females, but later released some of them at its AKT office. They fed nine of the ladies after asking everyone, who is Lady K? So they only took Lady K with the men to Abuja. They were particular about who they want to pick. Out of the 12 men, one of us was a police officer, an escort of Adogon. The officer was not paraded in Abuja. Instead, 12 of us, including Lady K, were paraded. He also recalled that the DSS official stole from Igbo's house, saying they took gold, money, our phones, which are still with them. They went away with the CCTV and one of the cats, after killing about four or five cats, they went away with a big MP3. They went away with a lot of things. They went away with the cat, believing that Chief Sunday Igbo turned to a cat. According to him, Igbo was at home when the DSS operatives raided his house, but somehow managed to escape. He said, yes, he was at home. The DSS saw him. They can't deny that because that night they came with three herbalists. Now, that tells you how much they prepared. You know, I want to chip this in. It doesn't matter how many people out there might want to say, oh, don't say that. Chief Son we are not talking about the um, how courageous Sunday Igbo is. We are talking about setting mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. In life, even you, 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 everybody makes mistake in life. Um, and in life, we grow up. When you grow down, then you go down. That's what it is. I think the reason why they were able to bring three abalis and all of that is because Sunday Adeyemo Igbo did not listen to advice and suggestions from people. I know that he had sabotage around him, 
who were pushing him. And of course, if you are a powerful person, if you are not careful, that power and many other things that you must have done in life will kind of keep pushing you to speak like you are indestructible. And there is no one that is indestructible because you always have a saboteur, a Judas around you. That's how it works. So Sunday I did had spoken too much about his prowess, spoken about how his father gave him this, his father. And in this life, you cannot have so much power spiritually, more than some other people too, who already have the power. There is no pot or secret altar that so the Bible's father might have initiated him, gotten power from or whatever, that people don't know about it. They know about it also. It cannot be so much of a mystery. The only secret is secret. That is what it is. The only secret to your long life and to your mystery is you keeping your things secret. And that, I believe, is where the problem lies. Sunday at the MO, he spoke too much. He spoke too much about this, spoke too much about that, spoke too much about that. If you have your power and you know what you can do, you have to keep yourself quiet. Nigerian regime of Buhari or Nigerian government or any of these people who worked hand in hand to make sure that they bring Sunday Igbo down, they are not afraid of Sunday Igbo. They don't see Sunday Igbo as all-powerful person, stronger than them. We know that this country, this Nigeria that we are in, we know what it is that many of them, they rule their state, rule the country, even local government chairman with spiritual powers, powers of darkness. They do a lot of things. Some of them go as far as India to get power. To get power. It's not an easy thing. They, it's a lot. A lot of things, you know. So, for them to now be afraid of Sunday, they will, no, it's not possible. It's not possible. That's just what it is. So, now you can see from the recount of this young man, who by the grace of God escaped, he said, they came with three abalis and that the DSS saw Sunday go woke, that they cannot deny that they did not see him. They saw him after shooting at so many corners of the house. All of a sudden, they couldn't see him again. That is what happened. They saw Sunday go woke. They were trying to shoot at different corners of the house. They brought an abalis. They brought spiritualists. We don't know if the spiritualists are from the south or from the north of Nigeria. There is no way you don't have spiritualists. There are people who have empowered hardened criminal, hardened criminals in Nigeria. I'm sure you must have heard of Shinorambo, who said he's now a Christian. He's now a pastor. He said he was never arrested, and he talked about how far he went into the realm of the spirit to get power, and how he murdered, killed those people who already empowered him after he got power, and offered more sacrifices than them. So as to keep what? All of his things secret. Because he knows that the probably the first, second, third, or fifth Babalawo or Marabu or spiritualist who empowered him could betray him. So he murdered them. He killed them. So that there will be no one who will know the root of his power or secret. So this is... It is not today that people have gotten themselves into powers in Nigeria or in Africa. People go as far as other African countries to get power, politicians or, or, or criminals or whatever people. So um, it's, a, it's a serious issue. So they saw him, they were shooting, and he escaped. So they believed he was hiding, not knowing he was in the building. Chief Ibo is not an ordinary man. So somehow they were shooting. At the corners of the house because they couldn't see him again so there is a possibility that somehow he made use of his spiritual power which is possible to disappear into thin hair upon sighting those abalis he knew that they came both physically and spiritually now that is the reason why they are not happy with lady k also you know it's not a practice that is known publicly although they didn't allow any recording that's why they took the cctv and at that time no one will be able to do a recording of this unless there is a remote camera that picked it imagine they came with babala who came with spiritualist so they came physical and spiritually so it means that if the nigerian government wants to put an end to terrorism in nigeria they will do so without any problem if they know how to bring three babalao 
So somehow, Sunday Bowo disappeared either spiritually, either he was able to do that spiritually and kind of um, do something. But whatever it is, he went on to say, Chief Sunday Bowo is not an honorary man, he is the Akoni Odua of Yoruba land and the real son of Odudua. When the DSS could not find him, they brought in their abalist. And they started chanting incantations, wanting him to come back. The Abalis later told the SS that Baba Igbo has turned, turned to a cat. That was when they started killing the cats. They believe, I believe they know he has metaphysical powers. That was why they came in with Abalis to get him at all costs. But God was not ready to put his, lives, his life in the hands of the DSS. So... All of the stories that we've been giving out to you back there is not a joke. It is the truth. Sunday Bowo had a way to transform himself somehow. That is if the Barabus, the Babalawas that they brought are not fake, empty. Chanting incantations to find out if Sunday Bowo is in the hair. Disappeared from the eyes of common men, from ordinary men, from the physical eye. When those ones chanted to find out they realize that there is nothing in the hair. So they picked in their spiritual realm that Sunday Bowo already transformed himself into a cat. And as a cat, he will be able to jump out of that house and move. So definitely with the rest of the cats in the house, they believe that the rest of the cats should be killed and taken away. Well... He noted that the abalis that accompanied the DSS operatives to Igbo's house wore ordinary clothes, not traditional attire. But when the DSS could not find Chief Sunday Igbo, they called them in and the abalis started chanting incantations. The DSS operatives were more than 20, and most of them were from Oyo, while the soldiers were more than 200. So they brought in 220. I could count about 87 vehicles when they were taking us away. They came with ambulances too, believing they were going to a war zone. Ademola and some others who were arrested spent 62 days in the custody of the DSS. And, you know, he narrated all of these terrible experiences. Um, he said they were maltreated, giving food that a dog could not eat, sleeping on a on beer floor for 62 days, eating in the same place where they defecated, same place where they urinated, same place where they did their prayers. They were only given 20 naira cowbell meat. That's just one sachet and a loaf of bread to eat every day. One milk one slice, one fifteen era uh, bread. They had no access to lawyer, no access to family. It was hell. And they also asked them personal questions, like how, what are your, what is your purpose in Sunday Bo's home? They also asked for bank account, Facebook name, village address, address, series of questions. How long he has known Sunday Bo? All of these questions were asked. And from there, they took them to another cell where he had access to Fulani outside the Tennis who don't understand the English language. Some of them were suspected bandits and Boko Haram members. There were others who were not outside but suspected IPOB members. So they took them there. It is terrible. And he said, the Kanuris, the Ausas, what bounded us together is the Muslim salat, the prayers, and nothing more. It was hell. He said they prayed, raising their voices, both Christians and Muslims. It's terrible. A very terrible, terrible, terrible event. What are your thoughts about this? If you have not subscribed to this channel, let's do it together. And it is free. Simply tap on the subscription button and the red notification icon bell below to alert you whenever videos such as this are dropped. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thanks for returning. If you have been here with us constantly, I say God bless.